This chapter about a person in major impurity, if he wants to sleep or to eat before he takes his bath. That is uh, the chapter. Hadith 43. Haddasani Yahya al Malik, an Abdullah ibn Dinar, an Abdullah ibn Umar, an Huqad Zakara, Umar ibn Sattar, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أنه يسيبه جنابة من الليل فقال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم توضع واغسل ذكرك ثم نم حديث 44 عن مالك عن هشام بن عروة عن أبيه عن عائشة ذوي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنها كانت تقول إذا أصاب أحدكم المرأة ثم أراد أن ينام قبل أن يغتسل فلا ينم حتى يتوضع وضوءه للسلام. There is a third 65 وحدثني عن مالك النافع أن عبد الله بن عمر كان إذا أراد أن ينام أو يتعمى وهو جنب غسل وجهه ويديه إلى المرفقين ومسح برأسه ثم تعمى أو نام. وضوء of a person in a state of major ritual impurity. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Abdullah ibn Dinar, that Abdullah ibn Umar related that Umar ibn Khattab mentioned to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he would sometimes become janub in the night. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Do wudu and wash your penis and then sleep. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Hisham ibn Urwa, from his father, that Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to say, If you have intercourse with your wife, and then wish to go to sleep before doing ghusl, do not sleep until you have done wudu as for prayer. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Rafi, that Abdullah ibn Umar, if he wished to sleep or eat or janu, would wash his face and his arms to the elbows and would wipe his head, then he would eat or sleep. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First hadith that is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, and that is about his father, Sayyidina Umar, that once he becomes impure at night time, either because of that dream or sexual relation with his wife, Prophet said to him, Do your wudu, waqsil zakarak, and uh, wash your private part and then go to sleep. Uh, it is very clear that there is taqdeem and taqheer means uh, actually it should be like this. He should wash his private part and he does his wudu because uh, wudu is coming after washing his private part and then he goes for sleep. And the second uh, hadith that is the hadith of Aisha, he used to say, that if someone got sexual relation with his wife and he wants to sleep because there is still time for the prayer, so he should not sleep until he does his wuzu. That is wuzu just like the wuzu for the prayer. Now, the next asar, which is uh, asar of Abdullah ibn Umar, that is a bit different, in that he does not do his complete wuzu. What does he do? If he wants to sleep or he wants to eat anything, he would do his wudu, whole wudu except for washing his feet. Just he would not wash his feet, but he uh, wash his hand, his face, his two hands, two elbows. Even he does uh, masa, wiping on his head. Then he would eat or if he wants to sleep, he would go for sleep. So this is how Abdullah ibn Umar is a bit different uh, in this matter. Now, 
there are two, you can say two mazahib, are two opinions in this case. The first is, which is mentioned here, that is the saying of Imam Malik and the other ulama, like Shafi, Ahmad. They all say that if a person wants to, to go to sleep or uh, to eat, it is recommended, it is recommended to do wudu. They are not saying that it is wajib, no, it is recommended. Wajib is only with uh, some al-zahir, some zahiriya, zahiriya people who sticks to, uh, sticks literally to the text. They would say, yes, it is wajib, uh, seeing these ahadis. But when you see all other ahadis, it, uh, it seems that it is recommended, not wajib. Why? Because uh, there is another hadith of Aisha, not this one, another hadith of Aisha, in which she said that it is enough for this person, if he wants to, to go for sleep or want to eat, just to wash his hand. Washing the hand, that is uh, quite reasonable, especially before eating. Even, even if you are not uh, committed any major impurity and you want to eat, that is sunnah, that is mustahab to have to wash your hand. So, this is why they say that it is not wajib. And uh, what about the menstruant woman? Menstruant woman, of course, the menses are going to last for days and days. This is why. Uh, is it also recommended for her? We just find one, one imam, one tabi'i, or al-awza'i. Although you say, yes, it is also good for menstruate women, recommended for menstruate women to, to do wudu as well. So that is uh, the first, first opinion that it is recommended. The second opinion is that of Imam Hanifa, who says that it is no need, there is no need, there is no need to do wudu. Did you say Imam Awza'i said it is recommended for menstruate women to wash the hands before they eat? Yes, uh, to, to, to do wudu. Mm. To do wudu. Uh, to do wudu before going to the sleep. Going to sleep. Uh. Imam Abu Hanifa says that it is not needed. Wudu is not needed. Whether you want to go to sleep or you want to, to eat something, it is not needed. But if someone does that, if someone does that, then it's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Because... Uh, there is another hadith of Ammar ibn Yasir in which he said that an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam junubi iza akala wa shariba wa nama an yatabadda that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given a rukhsa, a permission for the person in major impurity if he wanted to eat or drink or sleep to do wudu. To do wudu, he gave the permission to do wudu Actually, it should be like this. He gave the permission not to do wudu. So this, this wording is not clear by itself. And it should be Allah Yatamullah. The Prophet Sallallahu has given a permission not to do wudu. But the wording, his wording is Rakhas and Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this, 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 and the end, An Yatamullah, to do wudu. But uh, if there is a ruksa, there is a permission. So permission means something is given to you. As a, as a permission, not a, not a commandment. And they also got this hadith of Sayyid ibn Huwaris, another hadith of Sayyid ibn Huwaris which shows that this wudu is not needed, that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi came out of Al-Khala. Al-Khala, whenever the word Al-Khala is used, Bayt Al-Khala, we say Bayt Al-Khala, means going to the toilet or to relieve yourself. He came out of Al-Khala and uh, some food is presented to him. So some people said to him, Allah natika bi tuhurin, Allah natika bi tuhurin, should not he bring you some, uh, something to purify yourself in another narration? Allah tatawakwa, don't you want to do wudu? So what was the answer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, la usalli fa atatahha, I don't want to pray, so I need some purification. And in another wording he said, Ma aratu salata fa I did not want to pray. So I do my wudu. And then he has taken that food, which was, you can say, a, 
yani a flesh of bone and he ate from it and he did not touch the water so this is uh, this is the evidence of imam hanifa that this thing is not required but if somebody does then it does not matter so we can say anyhow anyhow it is something which is recommended the person who wants to sleep or he wants to eat he should do wudu he should do wudu and go to sleep and according to ibn umar he should do wudu whole wudu or the part of wudu except the feet uh, except the feet except the feet so this is also acceptable and less than that less than that just to wash his hand and that is specially for eating for eating so you can say that there are three positions this one is to wash your hand more than that wash your face hand as well not your feet more than that you do the complete wudu so there are three three actions and anyhow that is obligatory chef about the ghusl the recommend to change the ghusl and then go to sleep or ghusl ghusl is required after in order it is is required is required because you can't pray without ghusl Uh, but it is not required immediately it is not something which is required immediately you can delay it until for the time yeah. or until the time you want to pray sheikh what was, was the second opinion you said uh, it was wash your hand and the second opinion was wash your hand and face no that is the saying of ibn umar washing your hand face hand till elbow and even wiping on your head not not washing your feet only feet are exempted in this opinion So that is about this chapter now we let us move to the next chapter Babu i'adat al-junub lis-salah wa ghaslihi idha salla wa lam yaskur wa ghaslihi sawba This chapter is about the person in major impurity to repeat his prayer and to do ghusl if he has already prayed and he did not remember and also if there is uh, some impressions or some something liquid upon his clothes to to wash it first hadith number 45 haddathani yahya an malik an ismail ibn abi hakim anna ata ibn yasar akhbarahu anna rasul allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kabbara fi salat min as-salawat thumma ashara ilayhim bi yadihi an imkusu fa dhahaba thumma raja'a wa ala jildihi asal al-ma'i this hadith there is a lot of discussion about it so let us Yes, take this and this person. Hmm. Translation. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Ismail ibn Abi Hakim, that Atta ibn Yasa told, told him that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the takbir in one of the prayers, and then indi- indicated to them with his hand to stay in, stay in place. He left and then returned with traces of water on his skin. Now this hadith, uh, which said that Atta ibn Yasa akhbarahu Ata ibn Yasar he is tabi Ata ibn Yasar is tabi and then he says uh, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam akhbarahu then this hadith becomes what this hadith is a marfu hadith no is it mawquf hadith no mawquf hadith should be a saying of uh, a sahabi so this hadith that is a tabi is saying the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam Uh, did this so it means this is either mursal or munqati and uh, as we have known right from the beginning that imam ibn abdul bar in his book at tamhid he tried to find out the missing link the missing link in each munqati hadith so he got uh, the missing link which is either in one case is abu huraira and another case is abu bakra they got this hadith so this hadith now is musnad It means Musnad Muqtasil means it is no more Muqtasil. That is one thing. The second thing is when we take the Hadith of Abu Huraira and Hadith of Abu Bakra, there is a little bit of variation in their wording. Now in this wording here that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Kabbara, he said Allahu Akbar fi salatin min al-salawat in one of the prayer. Thumma ashara ilayhim biyadihi anim kusu Then he pointed towards the people with his hand, with his hand like this. Anim kusu, yani stand, stand. Then he went. Then he came back. 
وعلى جلده أثر الماء and there was some impressions of water on his skin. It means that he has taken his bath. So here, in one variation, it is very clear, he said, Kabbar, he said, Allahu Akbar. So he said, Allahu Akbar, while he was, while he was, yes, in the state of major impurity, because he remembered later. So it means that he started his prayer while he was not on Tahar. Not purified. That is that what implicates. The second variation is there is no word of kabbara. It says kama fi musallah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to his place of salah and he stood there. When he stood there, oh, he just remembered and he said, huh? "Stay, wait for me." And the third variation is in sarafa, lama in sarafa kabbara. When he came back. When he came back after taking bath, kabbara, he said Allahu Akbar. It means that in the beginning he did not say Allahu Akbar. He just remembered before entering into prayer, he remembered, he went back for wash, washing his his body, washing, uh, taking bath, and then he came back and he said Allahu Akbar, he started his prayer. All right, that is about as far as the word takbir is concerned. And as far as... Uh, saying this, that stay there. Summa ashara ilayhim bayadi and in kusm. He pointed with his hand. In the hadith of Abu Hurairah, he says, Qala lahum makanakum. He said to them, makanakum, stay in your place, makanakum. And in the hadith of Ibn Bakra, fa'awma rasulullahi bayadi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed with his hand, <coughs> like this, with his hand, makanakum. Stay in your place. So, this variation, with this variation will implicate another thing that, did he speak or he did not speak? So if he did not speak, if he did not speak, that is a different matter. And if he spoke, after saying Allah what, but if he spoke, then this is a different matter. So this is why we have to take this variation into consideration as well. Now here, this is, there is the issue. He started his prayer, this is definite, he started his prayer and he was not in his tahara. He was not purified, that is definite. Sahaba started their prayer and they were in their tahara. So Sahaba are praying behind our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why? They are in their state of tahara, but Prophet is not in the state of tahara. So their prayer, their Allahu Akbar is valid or not. So this is the issue. In this issue, you know, we can solve it in three ways. In three different ways we can, we can solve this issue. If we say, if we say that he did not say Allahu Akbar, he just came, he stood, and he remembered, oh, I did not do my ghusl. And then he said to the people, stay, let me go, wash myself. And then he came back. And he started his prayer. Is there any difficulty now? Huh? In this issue? No difficulty at all. Because he did not start the prayer. Nobody started the prayer. So this is why the prayer was delayed for a few minutes. For a few minutes but there is no issue here. That So those people who would depend upon this saying that he did not say takbir, but he just stood in his musamma, then there is no problem at all. The problem comes if we believe that he said kabbar, like the narration of Imam Malik. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa kabbar fi salatin min salaf That he did takbir. And now comes the question. He did takbir while he was not pure. Was not purified. And the people are purified behind him. So here there are three issues. Uh, you can... You can solve it in two, three ways. The first one is that he said Allahu Akbar and then he remembered he did not uh, do his ghusl. He went, he did his ghusl and he came back. People are waiting for him because they have already entered in the prayer. They are waiting for him. And then he continued his prayer. He continued his prayer. That is one way. But what is the difficulty here? What is the, 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 the 
What is the disturbing matter? Tipped away. Huh? Tipped away. He's walked away and he's broken the prayer. Yes, Salah is not valid. There's no imam at that point once he left. Yes, when he, when he left, he was not purified. He was not purified. So he said takbiratul ihram while he was in Janara. So that takbir is valid? It's not valid. Forgetfulness, yeah. Even, even forgetfulness. Even, if, you see, there is a rule here that if you enter into the prayer, even forgetting that you did not do your tahara, you have to, you have to, because your prayer is not valid without tahara. It's not valid. So technically this prayer doesn't even begin, even though he gave it to prayer. Uh, because takbir to the haram is rukun. It's the rukun of the prayer. It's the most, uh, it's the first pillar of the prayer. So if the pillar of the prayer is not valid, how the prayer is going to be valid? So if you see that one, you will say, oh, if that was the matter, and that is, uh, anyhow, that is abrogated. If this is the matter, that is abrogated because there is another hadith, sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يقبل الله صلاة بغير تحور Allah SWT does not accept any prayer without tahar. So it means that even if he did it, then this is mansuq. That is abrogated. It is mansuq because of sunnah and it is mansuq because of ijma'ah. Consensus. Because the consensus of the scholar is that if you if you pray without tahar, your prayer is not valid. So ijma is there, sunnah is there, so this action the Prophet might have done it, but later it was abrogated. This we have to believe in this way. The second way, <clears throat> that Prophet sallallahu came and he said Allahu Akbar once again. And the people said Allahu Akbar once again. Is there any difficulty in this, in this matter? No. Huh? no difficulty. Because he said once again, in the state of Tahara, Allahu Akbar, and people said once again, Allahu Akbar, but and there is, uh, there is no difficulty at all. So Shaykh, you're saying this is possibility, but it's not in the hadith. Mm. No, but there is this. Possibility. Innahu lamman sarafa kabbara. Another narration is that when he came back, kabbara, he did takbir. Okay. There is one saying. Huh? But if the Sahaba also said takbir, would that not mean that uh, they, they started to pray again? What is this part of the no, no, because they have to follow the, the Imam. If Imam said Takbir, they have to say Takbir after him. So the first Takbir was not counted. Actually, it was not counted. Now, the third possibility is that he said Takbir, when he came back, he said Takbir. But the people behind him, they continued with the first Takbir. Because they have done Takbir while they are purified. They have said their takbir while they were purified. And Prophet did it, why? Because he, he purified himself now. So he said Allahu Akbar once again, and they did not say Allahu Akbar once again. They continued with the first takbir. What is the difficulty here? Shaykh. There is a difficulty here. Yes. Muhammad hmm? <coughs> Yes. Um, is it that the people are supposed to follow the Imam, so if the Imam's the is invalid and has theirs be valid, and then if he came back and did the Takbir, they did their Takbir before his... Before his Takbir? Yes, yeah. that, is, that, is, that, that is the problem. That is the problem that their Takbir is before the Takbir of Imam. And can you say Takbir before the Takbir of Imam? You can't say. So this is the difficulty here if you take this third one. And this is not allowed. This is not allowed except for with Imam Shafi. Huh? Mm -hmm. And that is one saying of Imam Shafi. Imam Shafi, because his principle is that the prayer of Imam and the prayer of Mamumi, the prayer of people behind him, that is, does not depend upon each other. For example, if, uh, if the Imam uh, breaks his wudu, what he is going to do? Go and do wudu. Uh, he will go Please and do it. He will appoint somebody. He will really? appoint somebody. Even yeah. if he, that, that issue is coming, appointing a person or not appointing, that will come. Right. But again, he leaves the prayer, 
Suppose he does the zoo and people are waiting for him, waiting for him, so he will continue, he will continue his prayer, with his prayer. So it means that uh, the, the, the prayer of the people behind him is not affected. But all the people have left their prayer and they also started doing their wudu. <coughs> nobody left. They were just waiting for him. So it means that their prayer does not depend upon the prayer of Imam. And in the very same way, if some among the Muslim breaks his wudu, hmm. what he is going to do? He will leave. He will ask the Imam to leave as well. <laughs> no. Because he is independent, of, huh? he will go and he will do his wuzu. He will do his wuzu. So he says, Imam Shafi says that, this is why Imam Shafi says that even if the niya, niya of Imam and Mamun is different, it does not matter. As long as he follows the Imam in, in the whole prayer, stand, bow, prostrate before this Imam, but niya can be different. And we have given the example of the difference of niya. In this case, in which hadith, where the niya of imam is different from the niya of mamumin. Do you remember this case is that? Is it when the prayer has started? Hmm? Is it when a person hasn't prayed his prayer, for example, is to make up? Hmm? Like for example, the imam is praying asr and the one coming behind him is going to pray bohad because he doesn't pray bohad. No, no. This is, you said that it is allowed, but how? Why it is allowed? On what basis? What is the basis from Sunnah for that? The ikhtilaf of niya. Ikhtilaf of niya of imam and mamun. Huh? Yes, hadith of Mu'az. Hadith of Mu'az ibn Jabal that he used to pray Isha with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the mosque of the Prophet. Then he will go to his area, Awali, and he will lead the people in Isha. So his father is already done with the Prophet. And now he is Mutanaffi, he is doing his nafil. And people behind him are Mustaris. They are doing their form. So the niya is different. So this is why according to Imam Shafi, according to Imam Shafi, he says that though it is not recommended that people should say takbir before Imam, it's not recommended. But this is uh, an exceptional case. And in this exceptional case, happened like this, so this is why it is all right, nothing wrong with that. So, and that is in accordance with this principle that ikhtilaf al niya ikhtilaf al niya does not matter. Another issue which is related to this matter is, if a person, if this situation happens when Imam remembers that he got no wudu, no tahara, what the people behind him should do? <coughs> There are three situations as well. When the Imam is leaving, when Imam is leaving, he could ask one of them to lead the prayer. So that man is going to continue with the prayer. All right, if he does not appoint a person to lead the prayer, what is the second situation? Someone can walk forward. Some of them, some of them comes forward and then he continues with the prayer. And what is the third situation? They abandon the prayer. Hmm? They abandon the prayer. They abandon the prayer? No. They wait. They wait for the Imam. Yes? yes. Same situation. They wait for the Imam. Now, this is the situation where in this Hadith Prophet has said, Umgusu, stand, wait for me. So this is why they are waiting for him. Now he did not say anything, he just disappeared. People don't know whether he's coming or not. Huh? He might have a marriage ceremony and he went there. Huh? Pray by themselves. Yes? Pray by themselves. Yes, pray by themselves. That's right. That's right. Each, each one is praying by himself. Yes, anything from Greenland? That's what we were going to say. Ah. They, they just complete their own prayers. Ah, they, just, they just continue with their own, in, own prayers, yes. And uh, looking at this situation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the saying of Imam Malik that... Shah, sorry. Uh, Did you say what, um, if the Imam 
don't come back and somebody does not appoint nobody. Yeah. So what, everybody continues to do individual prayer? Yes. Okay. Indi individual prayer, yes. Now here Imam Malik also, he said that if they think that Imam is going to come soon, if that is I mean, normally, they, they know that this Imam uh, either has broken his wudu or something has happened and he is coming back. If he is coming back soon, if they think that he is coming back soon, they can wait for him. And if they think that, you know, he is going to be late or after waiting for a while, he did not come, then the other two situations would, would apply. They ask someone to lead them, someone among them, or they would pray individually. The second issue is, the third issue is, <clears throat> when the Imam comes back, is he going to continue? Now, in this case, only we are uh, concerned about first takbir. Think, just imagine that the person has already completed one rakah. Hmm? He is about to complete one rakah, or he has done most of the one rakah, he has done his ruku as well. Then he remembered he got no guru, and he went back. Is he going to continue with his prayer or not? Oh. Imam? Yeah. No, no he starts the prayer again. Hmm? He says, when he forgot, when he forgot to uh, pray. <laughs> yes. What um, is he going to do? He would have started to again, his prayer to come in Bali because he lost his uh, tahara. There are two situations here. If he started without any purification, he started right from the beginning, he started without any purification, then he can't continue because continue, he can't continue because he started without any purification at all. But suppose he has broken his wudu during the prayer, during the prayer, and then he goes, does his wudu or ghusl, and then he comes back. Of course, uh, here there is no ghusl, there should be only breaking the wudu. So if he has broken his wudu by passing the wind, for example, so he leaves the prayer, he does his wudu, he comes back, he can continue. In this case, he can continue. But if he has started his prayer, prayer without tahara, then he can't continue. Is that based upon the hadith? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam three and forgot to add the extra. He left and he came back. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi forgot how many rakah he prayed. That, that is the other case where uh, uh, the case of Dhul Yadain, the case of Dhul Yadain who said that prayer is shortened mm -hmm. while you have prayed to rakah. And in this, this thing only apply to, to the case whether the Imam has, has spoken or not. If he has spoken, if he has spoken, still he would continue with the prayer, but he would do sajda sah because he has already broken the prayer by speaking or by saying the salam. <coughs> sure. No. Is that just applying to the Imam or as you as an individual, if you pray your salah and then you maybe like um, you let pass or whatever off and then you, you lose your door, do you, can you still continue from where you've left off? And is that what's Individually. That? Individual prayers, yes. Uh, individual prayer, that is a very, very easy because if you have started without tahara, no, 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 you, go, no, no. you do tahara, you start once again. But if you have broken your wudu, while you're praying, while you're praying, and you pray maybe a couple of times, yes. Uh, you, know, uh, you have once, once you have broken your wudu, as soon as you broke your wudu, you have to leave. You have to leave, go and do your wudu, come back and continue. Continue from where you left off. Ah, uh, yes, continue uh, from where you have left. Mm. So all you're saying, if you've done two rakas, you can finish another two rakas. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh. Now there is another issue, the last issue in this hadith is... Yes. Sorry, Mishra, we're a bit confused about the, the last issue. Uh, if, you, if you're praying and you break your wudu, um, by you praying alone or as an imam, and then you go away, do your wudu, and come back. So did you say you... Start again, or do you just continue from where you left off? No, no, no. You continue from where you have left because the first two rakah you have prayed with tahar. <coughs> you have prayed on tahar. So this is why when you come back, you will continue with, with that prayer. With that prayer, yani you will only pray two more rakah if it is Zohar or Asr. Hmm. 
Yes. Sure. Say if you prayed the salah already and you finished it, mm. and after you remember later on that you you didn't have no, you was in the state. This this is coming. Okay. This issue is coming. Now the last issue here is uh, the issue of appointing someone, which is known as istilaf. Appointing someone when the when the imam is leaving, should he appoint someone? In this case, the Prophet ﷺ did not appoint someone. So this is why some ulama they don't like appointing someone. They say it is makruh to appoint someone. It is makruh. But there are some other ahadis where the Prophet ﷺ has appointed someone. Because in this case, uh, one can say, oh, this is the matter related to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the prophet, and he said to the people, stay. So they waited for him. But if he is not the prophet, someone else, someone else. So he could appoint someone else, and then he will go and uh, <coughs> do his uh, wudu. So he can appoint. He can appoint someone. So do you think that? Uh, in the absence of the Prophet, when the Prophet is, uh, is absent, can he appoint someone? Even the Prophet, did he appoint someone? If he appointed someone, then the matter is easy to understand. Yes? No. No? no. Did he appoint in any case or not? I don't know. Hmm? Yes? So one of the hadiths we took earlier, where Prophet was um, purifying himself and he came and one of the Sahaba was already leading the prayer. Mm. One of the Sahaba. That, that, that is the hadith of uh, Abdurrahman ibn Awf. <coughs> so in the, the little Jamaat, the Sadaq should be allowed as well. Who has the deed that was makroof? Who has the deed that was makroof? What? Min al-Fuqaha, man qala bi al-Firaq? That is some of the Tabi'een. Some of the Tabi'een, they have said it. Not among the four, four jurists. Now we will let us move to the next asr, 66. And the Prophet said to Malik and Hisham bin Urban, the Raid of the Salt, that he said, I went to Umar and the Khattab to the Gulf. And he said, 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 قال فاتصل وغسل ما راى في ثوبه ونذح ما لم يرى واذن وقام ثم سلى بعد ارتفاع الضحى متمكنا كان ذا الاسد ان مالك ان اسماعيل بن ابي حكيم ان سليمان بن يسار ان عمر بن الخطاب غدا الى ارضه بالجرف ووجد في ثوبه احتلاما فقال لقد ابتليت بالاحتلاب منذ وليت امر الناس فاغتسل وغسل ما راى في ثوبه من الاحتلال ثم سلى بعد ان طلعت الشمس. Translate this to us and then we move to the next two ones. Yahya related to me from Malik from Hisham ibn Urwa that Zuyayd ibn Asad said, I went to Umar ibn Khattab to Juruf and he looked down and noticed that he had a wet dream and had prayed without doing huzul. He claimed, By Allah, I realized that I have had a wet dream and did not know it and not and had not done huzul. So he did ghusl and washed off whatever he saw on his garment and sprinkled with water on whatever he did not see. Then he gave the adhan or the yukama and prayed in the mid-morning. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Ismail ibn Abi Hakim, from Sulaiman ibn Yasa, that Umar ibn Khattab went out early in the morning to his land in al Jurub and found semen on his garment. He said, I have been, I have been tried with wet dreams since I have been entrusted with governing the people. He did ghusl and washed his garments of water of, of what he saw of the semen and then prayed after the sun had risen. There are two more asar very similar, so let us read them as well. وَحَدَّثَنِي أَنْ مَالِكَ أَنْ يَاهَ بْنِ السَّعِيدِ أَنْ سُلَيْمَانَ مَنْ يَسَارٍ أَنَّ أُمْرَ الْخَطَّابِ سَلَّى بِالنَّاسِ السُّبْحَةِ ثُمَّ غَدَى إِلَىٰ عَرْضِهِ بِالْجُرُفِ وَوَدَدَ فِي سَوْبِهِ اِحْتِلَامٌ فَقَالَ إِنَّا لَمَّا أَصَبْنَا الْوَدَكَ لانت الأروق فاتصل وغسل الاحتلام من صوبه وعاد لسلاتين Yahya related to me from Malik from Yahya ibn Sayyid from Sulaiman ibn Yasa that Umar ibn Khattab led the people in the Subha prayer and went out to his land in Jeruf and found semen on his clothes 
He said, since we have been eating rich meat, our veins have become fulsome. He did ghusl, washed the semen from his clothing and did his prayer again. Asad, next Asad is, and Malik and Hisab and Urwata and Abi and Yahya ibn Abdirahman ibn Hatib, and now we are Tamara Ma Umar ibn Khattab, he rakbin, fee him Amul ibn As, and now Umar ibn Khattab, Arra Sabibadi Tari, Kaiba min Badi Miyah, Fahtala Ma Umar, Wakadkada and Yusbiha, Falam Yedid Ma Rakbi Ma'an, Farakiba, Hatta Ja al Ma'a, Fajala Yaksil Mara, min Dalika al Ihtalami, Hatta Asfar. فقال له عمر بن العاص أصبحت ومعنا ثياب فدع سوبك يفصل فقال عمر مخطب عجبا لك يا عمر بن العاص لئن كنت تجد ثيابا أفكل الناس يجد ثيابا والله لو فعلتها لكانت سنة بل أقصل ما رأيت وأنضح ما لم أرى قال مالك في رجل وجد في سوبه أسر احتلام ولا يدري متى كان ولا يذكر شيئا راى في منامه قال ليتصل من احدث نوم نامه فان كان صلى بعد ذلك النوم فليعد ما كان صلى بعد ذلك النوم من اجل ان الرجل ربما احتلم ولا جرى شيئا ويرى ولا يحتلم فاذا وجد في صوبه ماء فعليه الغسل وذلك ان عمر اعاد ما كان صلى <laughs> Yahya related to me from Malu, from Hisham ibn Hurwa, from his father, from Yahya ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Hayyib, that he had set off for Mumra, for with Umar bin Khattab in a party of riders. Umrah. 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 A party of riders, among whom was Amr ibn al As. Umar bin Khattab dismounted for a rest late at night on a certain road near a certain oasis. Umar had a wet dream when it was almost dawn, and there was no water among the riding party. He rode until he came to some water, and then he began to wash off what he saw of the semen until it had gone. Amr ibn Aas said to him, It is morning, and there are clothes with us, so allow your garment to be washed. Umar ibn Khattab said to him, I am surprised that you, Amr ibn Aas, even if you could find clothes, would everybody be able to find them? By Allah, if I were to do it, it would become a sunnah. No, I wash what I see, and I sprinkle water. I sprinkle with water what I do not see. Malik spoke about a man who found traces of a wet dream on his clothes and did not know when it had occurred, and did not remember anything he had seen in his sleep. He said, "Let the intention of his husband be from the time when he had when he last slept, and if he has prayed since that last sleep, he should repeat it. This is because often a man has a wet dream and sees nothing, and often he sees something but does not have an omission." But if he finds liquid on his garments, he must do ghusl. This is because Umar repeated what he had prayed after the time he had last slept and not what was before it. You see the last bit, that is the saying of Imam Malik. You can say fatwa about Imam Malik. And this is why this book, Muatta Imam Malik, that is not only uh, the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are asar of sahaba, and then there is the saying of Imam Malik as well. Saying of Imam Malik. So here the last bit is clearly the fatwa of Imam Malik. Now let us uh, go back to uh, the hadith of Umar al-Khattab. Umar al-Khattab. The first one is when Zubayd ibn Salt is saying that he went to Juruf. Juruf that is uh, uh, when you are leaving Medina. Nowadays it's very simple. If you are leaving Medina for Islamic University, huh? the Juruf is on your right. The place where is uh, the buildings of the Islamic University, the right of it is the castle or a palace of the king. And this palace of the king is in this area which is known as Juruf. So, he said, and in those days it was outskirts of Medina, long, in a long way to one Medina. So he said, he found himself uh, that he got wet dream and he knew that he has prayed without without washing himself. So he said, by Allah, I think that I got wet dream. I did not realize it. I have prayed without ghusl. So this is why he did his ghusl and he also washed the liquid which he found on his clothes and where there was no liquid, he just sprinkle some water upon it, that is nada, sprinkling the water upon it. 
and then he did azan and iqamah and then he prayed after the time of duha mutamakkinan after yani it was uh, late after duha so here did he ask the people to repeat the prayer hmm? because the other hadith would say that he left the prayer he left the prayer as well so did he ask the people to to repeat their prayer no he repeated his own prayer he repeated his own prayer that is uh, we understand from this asr the second other umar ibn khattab went to his his land in juruf he got some land in juruf and he found some semen in his clothes and he said laqad ibtilu tu ibtili tu bi ihtilam munzu walli tu amr an-nas i have been i have been uh, Uh, suffering, suffering from ihtilam, from that dream, since I was given the task of ruling the people. So what is the relation between the two things? He says, since I became Khalifa, I, start, I got this, this suffering from that dream a lot. What, what might be the reason behind it? Stress. Hmm? Stress. 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 <laughs> what? Getting older. Uh, getting older, it's in young age more. He's busy with the people. Shaitan? He's busy with the people. Because he's busy he busy with the people? Yeah, he can't go to his wife. Yes, that is right. <laughs> that is right. Because he's so busy with the people that he will not go to his wives. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is why he got this wet dreams. All right. وَغَسَلَ مَرَا فِي صَوْبِهِ مِنَ الْإِحْتِلَامِ And there is that he washed He washed whatever semen he found in his clothes. He washed it, and then he prayed after the sun had risen. Third asa, same afoma. Here he said, "Inna lama asabna alwadaka lana tilwuk." Since we started eating a lot of flesh and uh, and what meat, hmm? uh, meat and uh, 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 the fat. And fat, Radak is fat, hmm? and with a lot of fat in the meal, Lanat <coughs> al-Uruq, the veins, the veins became very soft, uh, very soft, so this is why we are uh, getting it. So he has given another reason here, another reason for getting wet dreams. And there is nothing new in that, this hadith. <coughs> Now the third hadith is a, a lengthy hadith, Of Yahya ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Hatib, he did Umrah with Umar ibn Khattab. Among them were Amr ibn As. There they stayed at night in a midway near to some water. <coughs> Umar got wet dream, and it was about to to dawn, and he did not find water with the caravan, so he rode <coughs> until he came to the water. And then he started washing whatever he saw of this uh, liquid until it became bright. Amr ibn Abbas said to him, ah, we, we people got close with us. So you, know, you can take another, another suit, you know, another cloth, and let your cloth which is wet be washed. So Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab said, Wa ajaban laka ya Amr ibn Abbas. Hmm? Very surprising Amr ibn Abbas. If you got clothes, do you think everybody got clothes? Wallahi la fa'altuha lakana sunnah. That if I do, it will become a sunnah. Why did he say that? If I do it, yani I, uh, it will become a sunnah. Huh? Let me speak to the Sheikh. One was the Qadali can be sunnah to your sunnah for Khalifa Rashti. Uh-huh. And the other one, maybe he just meant it yani, as a general linguistic meaning. That it become a practice amongst people just because, you know, uh-huh. <coughs> يعني بكاد ذا بروفيت اسد عليكم بالسنه والسنه الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعد قال يا سيد ذات ابايد باي ماي سنه اند سنه الخلفاء الراشدين هو ويل كم افتر مي سو هي 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 وود سي ذات اف اي دو ات بيبل وود تيك ات از سنه اند ذن دي ويل دو ات هي سيد بل اغسل ما رايت وانظف ما لم ارى اي ويل واش وات اي سي اند اي سبرينكل ووتر اون وات اي دونت سي Here, before we move to the fatwa of Imam Malik, uh, here there is uh, something which is, which is also very important. That is about the 
the sperm or the, the semen itself. The semen itself, there are two opinions about the semen. That the semen is najis or semen is fine. Semen is najis, is dirty, this is why it is washed. Our semen is tahir, but it is recommended to wash it, but it is tahir by itself. There are two opinions. Do you remember who said it is tahir among the four Jewish? Huh? Huh? Uh, Imam Ahmed. Among the four Jewish? Imam Ahmed. Huh? Imam Ahmed. Who else? Shafi. Shafi. Huh? It's normally the saying of Imam Shafi. First, yes. First, Shafi is saying that Imam Ahmed has said the same thing. And uh, who is very and strict about it that it is najis. <laughs> Imam Hanifa and also <laughs> Imam, Imam Mali. So those people who said it is najis, uh, their dalil is, first dalil is that look at its origin, from where it is coming. Whatever comes from your private part, that is najis, is not so. Urine, something else, so. Everything from the private part is najis. So why not money? It should be najis as well. So looking at the origin, it should be najis. And second evidence is from these ahadis. What is the evidence here? He washed it. He washed it. But uh, he also said, farki. And if it is dry, then you have just to... Scrape. Huh? Scrape. Yes. Just, yes, just to scrap it. That's right, <laughs> if, it is, uh, if it is dried. So they say that it means that it is dirty. And uh, all these are, this shows very clearly that it should be washed. But those who said it is tah, uh, what is their evidence? Was it a dried one or liquid no, it was, one? It was, it was, it was not dry. Uh, as far as I remember, all of us. Uh, because there also the hadith of uh, where Aisha, she saw some steam on her clothes and she scratched it off. Scratched it? it. Yeah, yes. Scratched it. Yeah, that is clear that even the first group they say scratching. Scratching it, it's, it's all right. Scratching it, it's all right. But what is the main argument for those people who say it is sahih? That the human being is sahih. And the insan khulaqa min. That is the, 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 the strongest opinion is that look at the origin of the man, human being. Are you saying that the origin of the man is dirty? Uh, semen is the origin of the man, creation of the man. So it should be based upon something tah. So it is tah. It is the essence, it is the essence of your whole body. From which such a beautiful man, uh, such a beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come. So this is why it should be tah. All right, then they will say, why then you have to wash it? Yeah. If it is if it is so tahir, somebody they are so I mean, some people when they come to argument they will say if it is so tahir, why don't you just uh, lick it uh, <laughs> eat it? So here there is not the question of eating. The question is you wash it. So they say you wash it. So it means it's dirty. So what is the answer to that washing? It's like hmm? it's like to look at it or to, to keep the, the clothes clean. Yes, and even if you got. If you got some mud on your clothes, hmm? some mud, are you not going to clean it? It's mud, so you don't want it. Though it is clean, it is clean, it is tired, but you don't like the mud coming to the mosque with mud upon your clothes. And sometimes some your, your, your uh, nasal hmm? uh, stuff which comes out of your nose, al something saliva which comes come out from your, from your mouth and it drops upon your clothes, you will say, oh, because it is tired, so let me pray with it. No, you are going to wash it. So that, that is the matter, the Prophet has washed it. So this is the opinion of uh, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad, and also Ishaq ibn Rahway, Dawood al-Zahiri, all the, and among the Sahaba, Saad ibn Abi Waqqas, and also ibn Abbas, they got this opinion. The first group where Imam Hanifa, if you say, all right, if it is, uh, the Prophet has also scratched it. So it means scratching. Scratching means that it's not dirty. What he would say? 
uh, in reply to this this question, we will say, "All right, if it is uh, if it is dirty, you must wash it." But the Prophet has scratched it as well. So what what is his answer? Do they make a distinction between dry and and wet? Any any yabisan or yes, any of course it is. Because if it is dried, if it is dried, then it is to be scratched. Hmm. That is the hadith of Aisha. Hmm. And if it is rat, if it is liquid, I used to wash it. If it is dried, I used to scratch it. He would answer that to him, purifying is not only with water, purifying through different means, even with clay. Uh, scratching al-fat, that is also one way of purifying as well. So he said that is the way of purifying and we are doing it, so it, it does not matter a lot. So this is uh, about this issue. Now another issue which is also related to, to this discussion is, all right, the Imam has prayed the whole prayer <coughs> while he forgot his janaba, that he was not purified. He read the whole prayer. What he is going to do after the prayer when he uh, remembers? He would pray, is not so. He would do his ghusl and he would pray as Umar had done. And also we got the similar case of Sayyidina Usman. He has done as well. What about the people behind him? Are they going to repeat their prayer? No. No. They are talking, so they are not going to repeat. Sayyidina Umar asked them to repeat their prayer? No. Sayyidina Usman asked them to repeat their prayer? Nobody said they uh, they repeat their prayer. <coughs> Only the differences between Imam Malik and Imam Shafi, the differences between Imam Malik and Imam Shafi, they say that if the Imam was forgotten, all right, all of them would say yes, they would not repeat. But uh, Imam remembered, huh? when he remembered, he said, if I leave the prayer now, it is embarrassing, huh? embarrassing for me. So let me finish the prayer with them. Hmm? So he continued praying until he said, Assalamu alaikum. That is the case where he remembered, but still he completed his prayer. Here comes the difference between Imam Shafi and Imam Malik. What Imam Malik would say here? He has to give up his prayer. Hmm? He has to stop his prayer when he remembers. That he remembered, that he remembered, and now he is praying on Ghair Tahara, on Ghair Tahara. So the people behind him, <coughs> he should tell them and he, they should repeat their prayer. This is what Imam Malik would say, because now he knew that he is not leading the prayer on Tahara. So his prayer is not valid. So the people behind him, their prayer would not be valid now. Forgetfulness, that is another thing. But now they know both of them. Both groups, uh, Imam knows, and the people behind him, they later know that he was not on his tahara, and he knew that he is not on tahara. So he has differentiated between forgetfulness and unforgetfulness. What is the saying of Imam Hanifa here? Imam Hanifa would say in both cases. Repeat it. Hmm? Repeat. Repeat, yes. yes. He would say, yes, all of them should repeat the prayer. Why? What is the main... Uh, because of his principle. Imam Shafi's principle is that ikhtilaf niya, as we have said, if there is a difference of intention between Imam and Mamumin, it does not affect the prayer. But Imam Walifa says, no. Imam's... people's prayer is dependent upon Imam's prayer. So whatever is the niya of Imam, it should be the niya of Mamumin. If he is in Tahara, if he is not on Tahara, then the people behind him, their prayer is not valid. So this is, uh, this is the saying of Imam Abu Hanifa. But according to the hadith of Umar, Usman, we know that they have repeated their own prayer. They did not ask the congregation to repeat. Now we come to the last bit of the fatwa of Imam Malik. Imam Malik says that a person finds in his uh, clothes the impression of a dream. He does not know when was it. He does not even remember seeing anything in his in his sleep. So this uh, this person should do ghusl. Do ghusl means ah, just say no, means from the last sleep. 
from the last sleep. So he should remember, uh, he should repeat only that prayer which he prayed after, after his last sleep. What is the reason? Because this person might have uh, got that dream. And there are two cases. He remembers that he got that dream, but there is no impression on the clothes. And the other situation is he, he got in something on his clothes, liquid on his clothes, but he does not remember the wet dream. <coughs> if a person remembers that he got wet dream, but there is no sign of it on his clothes, what should he do? Huh? What should he do? Nothing is Yes, because uh, there is uh, no, nothing to substantiate to prove that he got the bad dream. So this is why he, he he got no need to do ghusl. He will do ghusl only because after sleeping he has to do ghusl only. The other situation is that he got some liquid upon his clothes, but he does not remember the bad dream. What should he do? What should he do now? He has to do hmm? Yes, he has to wash and he has to take bath as well because there is something to, to tell him that this is what happens. From where it would come? What Imam uh, Malik is saying, what is his fatwa now? He has, his fatwa contradict, contradicts with your fatwa now. He says in both cases, in both cases he should wash, he should take bath. He should take bath. فَإِذَا وَجَدَ فِي صَوْبِ إِمَانٍ فَعَلَيْهِ الْغُسْلُ And uh, if he finds something in his clothes, he should do ghusl. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ أُمَرْ عَعَادَ مَا كَانَ صَلَّى لِآخِرِ نَوْمٍ نَامَهُ وَلَمْ يُعِدْ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ Imam Malik has restricted it to the last sleep. To the last sleep because Sayyidina Umar has done so. Because he did not say, oh, I should repeat my prayer. Uh, from the last 24 hours. No. He just counted it from the last sleep. After the last sleep, uh, he has prayed just one prayer, that was Fajr prayer, and he repeated that prayer. If you want to go against the saying of Imam Malik, what is your evidence, or what is your argument, if you want to go against it? Imam Malik is saying that even if you got no impression, a wet dream on your clothes, nothing. You just remember, you just remember that you might have done wet dream. He said, still, still you have to take bath. Uh, and you say, no, Imam Sahib, I am not, I don't agree with you. So what is your argument then? Hmm? The previous hadith you just mentioned. Hmm? The hadith you just mentioned before that, you said, um, well, I think one of the hadiths, um, I'm not sure you had a wet dream, but then, he wasn't sure. Uh -huh. He wasn't sure, but I don't think he prayed. He said mm -hmm. he only prayed the salah, which he, um, he prayed after he slept. All right, what do you do? He said from Greenland. Um, from your the, the heart should be broken. You need to be certain and have certainty because, for example, in the prayer, if you think it was all broken, you only uh, you only break the prayer if you smell it or you hear it. Yes, that is the right answer. Right answer, the principle is al yaqeen la yadulu bi shak If you are certain about something, that certainty can't be taken away by doubt. Here there is just a doubt. Just a doubt that you might have a dream. There is no proof of that. So this is why, because of the doubt, because of the doubt, uh, uh, you can't base something, a ruling upon it. So that is, uh, that is the proper answer. And this is why the other fuqaha, they don't agree with Imam Malik in this issue. Until you see something with your own eyes. If you see something, some liquid on your clothes, then of course you, you will go to wash your body to have a bath. If not, then there is no need for that. Sheikh, what was, um, hmm. what was uh, Imam Malik's uh, statement regarding the Amal of Ahl al-Medina? Did he claim that the Amal of Ahl al-Medina was what he, he gave his fatwas upon? Normally, normally, Imam Malik, if, uh, if he, he will mention his fatwa, fatwa, in some places he would say that I found the people of Medina on this opinion. Some places he would say that it is very clear. But here he did not say that. So it means that is his opinion. And we have to stop here.